Hello, let's talk about velocity. Velocity is related to money and the money supply. So we cover it here. Velocity in physics means speed. And in economics, it is also related to speed, but it's actually the speed with which we use our money or our money supply to purchase things. So the quicker we, if we, as soon as we get money from uh, selling something or from income, and if we spend it real quickly, and if everybody does that in the economy, then the velocity in, in the economy will be greater. Now velocity, let's see how we can use that here in terms of monetary policy. Economists def define velocity as GDP divided by the money supply. And you can rewrite GDP, I'm referring to GDP here as nominal GDP. So nominal GDP is also P times Q. Because in unit three, we talked about uh, the calculation of GDP as multiplying the prices of the goods and services times the number of goods that we sell. So the prices times their quantities, Q stands for quantity. Uh, in, the, in the equation here, MS stands for the money supply. So we have velocity as defined as GDP over the money supply, and GDP is rewritten as P times Q. Now let's rewrite uh, this equation because uh, we will show that uh, from this equation we can come up with the equation of exchange and it will uh, May allow us to conclude something important about the money supply changes. So let's take a V and write it as V over 1. You can write anything over 1. 5 is 5 over 1, 10 is 10 over 1, V is V over 1. So then you have V over 1 is equal to P times Q divided by the money supply. So I'm just rewriting the right part of that equation. Now, if you cross multiply in math, if you have two ratios that are equal to each other, you can say that the top of the one ratio times the bottom of the other one has to equal the bottom of the one ratio times the top of the other one. So if we write that down, we can say that V times MS, so V, the velocity, times the money supply has to equal 1 times P times Q. So that's just P times Q. So what can we learn from this? Well, if these two are equal, is V times the money supply is equal to P times Q. In a relatively stable economy, velocity usually stays this, is fairly constant. So if it's 6 one year, it's around 6 the next year. The only time that where the velocity would really change from year to year is if the inflation rate increases a lot or if we have hyperinflation and then the velocity usually is very high during periods of hyperinflation. But if inflation is relatively stable and if the rate of uh, the technology where it comes to depositing and withdrawing money in banks stays about the same, then velocity is relatively constant. It might change a little bit over time. Uh, but from one year to the next, it probably doesn't change very much. So if during a particular year, we have no change in the velocity, but if we have, for example, 8%, an 8% increase in the money supply, which is not unusual in the United States, especially with the Federal Reserve printing so much money every year. Uh, let's take a look at P, P and Q then. So if the left side changes by about 8% total, then the whole right side must be changing by about 8%. But how is that broken down? Well, Q is real GDP. Real GDP on average changes around maybe 2 to 3%. Let's say it changes one year by 2%. Uh, oops. And what that means is that P, or the price level, must then be changing about 6%. And the other, so it, that would be a significant increase in the price level. Keep in mind that overall price level is not necessarily just consumer prices, so the CPI doesn't have necessarily have to increase by 6%, but overall prices, values, stock values, housing prices, and so forth, uh, would be increasing by about 6%. In general, what we can conclude 
is that the higher GDP goes, so the more that, I'm sorry, the higher the, uh, the money supply increases, the higher the, um, the, the more that the Fed increases the money supply, this MS, if Q is about 2, two or 3% on average, then the price level is going to increase per, almost proportionately by that amount. If MS was 10% in this example, then the price level would uh, increase by about 8% that year and so forth. So there's a direct relationship. So this, this, by the way, is the equation of exchange. So there's a direct relationship between uh, the money supply and the price level or inflation in the economy based on this equation of exchange. By the way, on uh, practice set or quiz questions, you might get some uh, questions that ask you to calculate uh, velocity. So if, uh, if I mention in the problem that the GDP is, let's say, $500, just make up some number, and if I tell you that the money supply is $100, then you can, of course, calculate very simply the velocity, $500 divided by $100, or $5. Or maybe in another problem, I could give you what velocity is. I might say velocity is 6, and then I might tell you what GDP is. Let's say I might tell you that GDP is 1,200, and then you have to calculate the money supply. So, well, 1,200 divided by something is equal to 6, so you would know that 1,200 divided by 200 is equal to 6. So in this example, uh, you would know that the money supply would equal 200, and that would be the answer to your multiple choice question.